Hello traders, let's take a look at the price prediction challenge contestants and the eventual winner. So we had lots of different predictions that were made to GameBot as you can see here. We had volume based predictions, we had uh, Fibonacci's, technical indicators, channel, uh, tr uh, diagonal trend lines and horizontal trend lines as you can see. We had overlapping fibs with L8 wave, the ABC. We had, uh, I think this is just moving average with some trend lines as you can see. Uh, pivot points, I think that is. Oh no, that's Fibonacci's. Yep, but the winning prediction goes to at Vic, and at Vic had predicted a low of 685, and this was the chart that uh, they had that that uh, he had put, as you can see. So 685 low from the SEC news dip, as as they can see, will recover and continue uptrend to 960. This might not occur. Uh, the prediction was, was quite close. 685 uh, was close to the actual low. Um, but we'll see if, if, if Ethereum recovers. It looks like it's going to continue moving down. Um, but uh, we'll see if that's correct. It looks like that the prediction that he had made was based on the HVN volume profile right here. Uh, that looks to be about 685, as you can see. And this was the actual chart of what um, Ethereum had done relative to the picture that was sent here. You see that long uh, candlestick there. That was Hirsch. And he had predicted bearishness, and bearishness had come. With the actual low being 666.01. So not too far away from 685. Uh, not the super tight prediction that you know we've had in the past weeks, but still a, uh, a good prediction nonetheless to beat the other uh, traders who who submitted their predictions as well. So 685, good job to Vic, and uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Hello traders, let's get started with Wyckoff Theory Part 4. So this was my Patreon suggested video, as you can see here, Wyckoff uh, Part 4 was heavily suggested, not a lot of love for DCA still. Uh, I put this one up six times, but it still hasn't gotten voted to the top spot yet, uh, but we'll see next vote on Friday next Friday. Uh, so today we're going to be doing a recap and then to finish off the Wyckoff method I wanted to talk about order flow sentiment, Elliott Wave Theory and FIBS and how they correspond to Wyckoff trading. Because any type of trading, any, any type of indicator, any type of analysis needs to be combined with other types of indicators and other types of analysis, even Wyckoff or Elliott Wave Theory. And I think that Wyckoff provides a great bridge for Elliott Wave Theory as um, Elliott Wave 3 does dabble into, into consolidation patterns, but Wyckoff is really known for um, those consolidation patterns. So if you can combine Elliott Wave Theory, which looks at trending patterns and trending ratios with consolidation patterns with the Wyckoff method, that can actually uh, harmonize pretty well, and that's what we'll be talking about. But before we do that, let's do a quick recap on the last three videos. So we talked about the law of supply and demand within this playlist. Uh, that's exactly what you'd expect. Cause and effect is, during consolidation, it's known as building the cause either for an uptrend or building the cause for a downtrend. Uh, building the cause for an uptrend will be shaking out many longs so that stronger hands, as they're called, market makers, HFTs, uh, institutions, banks, potentially, um, get uh, take the positions that retail longs are selling to them. And then in distribution, it's where many uh, longs are, are entering, many shorts are exiting. And as they do that, they're, they're buying up the, the sell orders of institutions and then price goes down. So that's cause and effect, building the cause for an uptrend, building the cause for a downtrend. Law of effort looks at individual candlesticks and individual price moves and looks at uh, the price volume uh, pattern. So if there's a lot of price movement but no volume, that's divergence. That would be, as you can see down here. Um, that, that's not a good sign, but at the same time, a, a, a small candlestick with a lot of volume is not a good sign either. Uh, so it's these kinds of divergences that can reveal potential reversals in the trend. So we talked about the four types of consolidation. So this is accumulation, distribution, reaccumulation, and, and redistribution, the five different phases. I will say we're going to be focusing a lot on phase C, which I, I find to be the more uh, important phase. If, if there is such thing as an important phase within Wyckoff trading. Because uh, this is going to be a shakeout phase, and, and, and it is going to give the best spot to potentially buy or sell into a trend. Will occur with phase C, with a 
rapid down move or a rapid up move, and then price goes in the other direction as it uh, does. We also talked about accumulation in many different kinds of terms that um, that, Wyckoff, that Wyckoff had had envisioned about a, about a hundred years ago: reaccumulation, uh, distribution, and of course re redistribution as well. So that all leads us to the final part of okay. So how do we actually trade using the Wyckoff method with other indicators and with other kinds of analysis? So I found that bias indicators work quite well with, with Wyckoff trading. Bias indicators are uh, order flow sentiment, looking at what the crowd thinks, what the retail crowd believes is going to happen to the market, where typically the opposite tends, tends to happen. And uh, of course, tensorcharts.com provides order flow that's, that's quite powerful. And we're gonna be looking at three different types of analysis within uh, order flow that can combine with Wyckoff trading. So before we start, I just want to point out that we're talking about the spring mostly. Sometimes we're going to be talking about the ST, the secondary test. We're going to be talking about the the, the spring mostly and the UTAD and the, the UT. Up thrust above distribution and the up thrust here. Potentially the buying climax and selling climax, but order flow isn't really meant to help out with these types of areas. It's more meant to help out with extremes. When a price move happens, will that price move continue to happen or will, will there be a reversal? And that's what we're going to look for in uh, order flow. So if we look here, uh, if you haven't seen my my uh, newer videos on CVD, the cumulative volume delta, this is a really helpful indicator for gauging stop loss hunts and for gauging which which um, who's who's in control, whether the bulls are in control or whether the, the bears are in control. So this is this is the counters ratio down here as well. And for those who don't know what, what either of these uh, are, the counters ratio is the ratio of market buys to market sells. So, you know, there's 10 market buys, 10 Bitcoin market bought, 5 Bitcoin market sold. Counters ratio will be at 2, and it's going to fluctuate. Uh, my counters ratio is sent to a 60. So on the right side of, of tensorcharts.com, as you can see here, what I, what I did is I did M60, and then I graphed it. And that's how you get the counters ratio. It's more of a multiplication thing, you know, ratio. The CVD is, is similar, but it uses a different kind of calculation. CVD is market buys minus market sells throughout all periods. So as you can see here, it's just a running total of how much Bitcoin has been market bought versus market sold. We can use these two kinds of indicators in conjunction with uh, Wyckoff trading with, with Wyckoff events, as they're called, to try to determine whether it's accumulation or distribution. So let's look at this pattern here. This is not a beautiful Wyckoff pattern, I, I will say, to, to start. So what we see is heavy buying, heavy buying, heavy buying, and then we see one up thrust that could be potential an up thrust above distribution, right here, right? With the buying climax and UT before, you know, right, right about here, and here, here, buying climax, potentially up thrust, up thrust above distribution. And then CVD spikes. Typically when CVD spikes upward very, very rapidly and price doesn't move that much or continue to move in that direction, we want to look to sell because this indicates that there's a heavy amount of market buying relative to market selling. We can see that the counters ratio does turn a little bit more green here. So is this distribution? Well, what we want to look for now is the reaction to the market. So we, we see that price goes down and we're beginning to potentially enter, enter phase D. But what we, and then what we see here is, again, another uh, a lot of traders market buy in here as they see rapid momentum and potential. They, they believe we're going to break 9400, but we don't. Price continues to move down slowly, so this, this looks like price is going to move down. But then everything changes here, and this could have revealed that this was actually an accumulation pattern in, in the short term. Price goes down, but as price goes down and we go a little bit below support, we see a massive drop off in CVD. That's indicating a large amount of market selling relative to market buying. And one more thing, we, when we look at counters ratio down here, again, the ratio of market buys to sells, we can see that this is very, very red, about minus five. That means that there's about four to five as much Bitcoin being sold than there is Bitcoin being bought. Uh, market sold versus, versus, versus market bought here. Here it was only about, I'd say, two or three. So we can see that there's a lot more selling relative to buying when price went down, relative, relative again to buying relative to selling when price went up, if that kind of makes sense. So this reveals that this was actually accumulation. And price actually does go up from here, as you can see. 
and price goes up a little bit higher and then it actually goes down. But this would have been a really good spot to buy in with this kind of strange accumulation schematic, slight accumulation schematic, I would call it, because price doesn't actually confidently break much, much higher. It just goes up slightly more than that. But I think it's so important to note that if you believe that a pattern is uh, distribution, well, what, you, what would be the secondary step? Because I've had a lot of questions on what other indicators can I use? How do I go from there? Well, when you label, then you would look at order flow. You look at the counters ratio, you look at CVD. And to me, to be honest, this looks like distribution. This looks like the price is probably gonna move down. Uh, and the price does move down uh, naturally, but when the price moves a little bit below support, slowly moves below support, barely does, and then CVD just drops off, counters ratio goes quite wild. I mean, this looks quite bullish. And this would reveal that you're actually looking at a, a reaccumulation pattern. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the, um, yep, so the order book levels here. So this is just going to be large bid orders and large ask orders, also known as offers. So what we see here, where is it? Yeah, so what we see here is this yellow, these yellow lines represent Bitcoin uh, at a certain level of either, of either 100 Bitcoin being um, limit sold or 100 Bitcoin being limit bought. Uh, so, you know, bid and, and, and the offer, as you can see throughout here with these yellow lines. So over 100 at one specific level. So what do we see here? Well, we see that as the distribution phase that we believe was going to happen here, it looked like distribution. We see, you know, a large limit sell order that does not get contested. It's being respected. Uh, and, and this could be potential spoofing that, that someone could say, yeah, you know, it, it could be uh, a spoofing order where, you know, if price was actually to go up higher, it would just be canceled. That's spoofing. Uh, whatever this is, it does press price downward, as you can see. And then we see that we get a lot of limit order activity down here. We see a lot of limit orders popping up that are over 100. At the same time, again, like I've said a million times, we see a lot of market selling relative to previous periods of market buying. So this is really looking like accumulation. This is looking, this is just the actual methodology, uh, not just the theory, but the actual methodology of how these institutions are accumulating positions. HFTs in the short term to, to make a short term profit. As you can see here, they're accumulating with all these limit orders here that are getting filled with this heavy market selling. So that's what you wanna look out for as well. Uh, you wanna see many limit orders being, being um, sprung up like this around the price where you think that the shakeout is occurring or the price where the, the spring is occurring. So this would be a spring. So price went down and we had that, that, that spring with many limit orders being popped up. Same thing here with the UTAD upthrust above distribution. You'd be seeing a lot of limit orders um, being being uh, placed around that new high being created, and then you'd see price slowly go down. So it's those kinds of things with when you look at order flow that um, are really important when, when gauging is this accumulation or is this distribution. And as you can see here, it would have been a fine profit to make. Okay, so now I want to also talk about the other type of indicator that I think is a little bit simpler to use, which is sentiment. And there are two ways you can look at sentiment in, in conjunction with, with Wyckoff. You could use the long percent, or you could use the uh, logs and shorts. Let me just give a quick thing how to do that, because I get many questions of how do, you, how do you do that. This is long percent that you're about to see. So what you can actually also do is, if you use the indicator BFX LS100, this second one is percent. Um, this is useless. This is just the shorts percent, which is just, of course, the inverse of the long percent. But if you want to get logs and shorts, you would hit that, that, and you'd have logs and shorts here. So yeah, I, both work fine. I I prefer to use, um, honestly, both kinds of methods, but I, I like to have the long percent so I can just quickly look and then just put it away uh, so it doesn't you know clutter the chart with its the way that it, the way that it is. So yep. That's, that's how you get sentiment if you if you want to on TradingView. So what do we see here? Well, we actually do see a, a Wyckoff pattern of, distri of distribution here. This is a, this is a different um, time than, than what we had seen here, as you can see. So what do we see? Well, we see a similar type of pattern. To, to be honest, we see a, a fake move low and then we get that big drop off in sentiment. So we're expecting that this is accumulation, that the price is gonna to begin to move upward. But as price begins to try to move upward, this all looks bullish. This looks relatively bullish still. 
just at the moment where price is about to move upward and we actually break the high. Here, we get that crazy jump in long percent. That's telling us that there are many longs opening positions uh, rel relative to shorts opening positions. This is position data. The previous indicator of order flow was just market buys and sells, but this is actual positions on Bitfinex margin. So we can see that there are many uh, long positions being open relative to short positions entering. Uh, so this could be shorts exiting, longs entering. It could be both entering, but longs entering much, much uh, more rapidly. But now this is kind of telling us that this is probably not going to be a, a accumulation pattern. Price is probably going to, this is probably redistribution, right? Because that jump in sentiment is not healthy for the, the market, and especially that quick bearish move after that jump in sentiment reveals that this could be a level where many traders might be trapped. Uh, where if price actually does go up to that level again, we might get a lot of selling because there are many traders who open positions there and want to sell at break even, as traders don't want to take a loss. And price is unable to reach this high, I think, for a very long time. I don't think recently it, it even reached the high of 94 or 40, which is kind of funny. Yeah, Price wasn't able to go up here because so many traders had market bought, had, had, had bought into the trend here with this actual distribution pattern that price wasn't able to go up. So there are probably many retail traders who are still trapped at around these kinds of levels, and probably some who are trapped here as well. But yeah, we can see that kind of pattern here with this, uh, with, with this Wyckoff, with this Wyckoff move. And if I pull up the, the actual distribution one here, this was actually the sign of weakness, as you can see here. This was the SOW, Right, and then after the SOW, we get the we get the UT, and then we get the UTAD, and this one actually follows it very closely. It just looks a bit strange because this went so much lower, right? But we get the up thrust, we we get the UT, and then we get the UTAD. So this all kind of does make sense. If anyone had thought this was accumulation, I think that there would be some issues with actually looking back at this. Um, I understand why some traders might label this Wyckoff uh, consolidation phase as, as accumulation. But this is not healthy. Just new high, new high, and then just low. I mean, this is three. This is two new highs being created, uh, and and then we get this kind of move. This just doesn't really look like accumulation because if I pop up the accumulation pattern, it, it doesn't say that three highs are going to be made or you know three or four four highs that we actually had made are going to be made. No, it says you might get one more high made and then that low, but you don't see that here. You see actually just the low. So it's these kinds of just fine-grained details of, um, of, of, of Wyckoff trading that you can combine with sentiment to, to really just give uh, yourself a better picture of uh, what's happening in the market and what's likely to happen in the market. So that was what's gonna, what happens when you get that, that jump in long percent. But we can also look at what happens with the longs and shorts. So this one, I, I will say, is a little bit less Wyckoffian. This, this one doesn't really have any Wyckoff pattern. The other one definitely did. This is clearly distribution after it occurred, of course. But this really isn't. But this just shows a point of what you'd want to look out for, for a shakeout or for a UTAD. So we can see that the market goes up here, but there are many retail positions who are opening up longs. Price can't go much higher, as many traders had already bought in, and price goes lower. And then what we see here, is uh, we, we do see a bit of reaction here as many traders who maybe bought here had been stopped out here at, with that big drop and then price just kind of goes sideways here, it goes a little bit lower and then just goes there. However, after that long sideways period when we get that rapid move back downward, many retail positions likely open up shorts. You can see that shorts increased, longs decreased, and price went up. However, what happened here? I think the market actually continued to move upward here from, from what I remember, and I think the reason that was, price went up very, very quickly here, but, long, uh, but longs didn't really jump that much, and shorts, shorts did drop a bit, but not as violently as here, and also not as violently as uh, you know, here, they tried to, but then they failed. Um, not as violently as here, of course. And you can see, even when price actually went up here and, and shorts decreased, uh, price actually had to go back down before it went back up. So again, this isn't Wyckoff, you know, in itself, that, but this indicator can totally be applied to Wyckoff trading just to give you that extra edge that other traders might not be using sentiment, other traders might not be using order flow, but they, they might 
they might know Wyckoff quite well, but they don't really know how to add other indicators to it. So this can be a really good way to add other types of indicators to it. And of course, you can add uh, Fibonacci's and what we talked about before with uh, Elliott Wave Theory, which is bridging the gap between consolidation and trending market phases. So what do we see here? Well, it's kind of cut off, as, as you can't see the, the origin of this uptrend. But we see a we see an uptrend, and then we see that the 38.2 was at about here. So the, mo the two most important Fibonacci retracement points, as many know, are 38.2 and 61.8. Those two typically provide support or resistance. So we see actually a pretty clear accumulation pattern. Uh, if, if, I, if I pull up the accumulation schematic here. Yep, so we see the selling climax, the ST and the spring, but I think that this one was re-accumulation. Re yeah, this was re-accumulation, so we might not see that selling climax, but we do see the, uh, we, see, we see the low here, low here, and then a lower low here to spring out any traders who might still be in the trend and then price goes higher. So we can see this, and then this I think you could call a sign of strength, an SOS, as you can see here. Sign of strength typically occurs at the end. I don't think there's a name for this, these kinds of highs that were made, but you can see this type and this type of high being made uh, here. And then we get this, and then the most important part that I had said about this is when we get that spring below, we're actually hitting the 38.2% uh, retracement, which is triggering lots of liquidity for that level. The price goes higher. So you want to be on the lookout for whenever you see a potential accumulation or, or distribution move within the consolidation, uh, and in the spring hasn't ha occurred yet, or even if the spring or the, or the UTAD, uh, I mean the shakeout or the UTAD has occurred, you want to see has it hit any important FIB levels. This is a very important FIB level, and this kind of market pattern of, of this kind of Wyckoff accumulation, you just get even more of a confirmation after price hits the 38.2. Uh, that, that's a much better sign. Of course, you'd probably not want to enter here because uh, this is quite a bearish move. You don't want to wait for quite a bullish uh, pullback. You could enter in at the 61.8 here if, if you believe that this is phase D uh, and potentially a phase E as price goes above resistance here. You could enter here, or if you want to be more aggressive, you could enter on the run up here and just try not to, I mean, try to survive the the run down, I guess, or sell here, I mean, 21 hat side and buy back here. You know, many different kinds of trading methods that would allow you to, to, to make moves like that. Uh, but the important part is you, you're, you're triggering the liquidity at the 38.2% retracement. It's also acting as the final uh, spring before the uptrend begins. So of course, this is the Wyckoff market cycle that um, many traders probably are, are familiar with. And we can also see that Wyckoff market, market cycle here, but we actually want to use more Elliott Wave Theory uh, with, with this kind of move. So what, what do we have here? Well, we have a very strong downtrend for Ethereum. And what we see is that a very similar pattern that occurred for Bitcoin in the previous chart occurs for distribution here. We get that move up right above uh, resistance here with the UTAD, and then price goes down. The interesting thing about this part is not just the Fibonacci's, but the Elliott Wave structure of itself. And I attached actually a Elliott Wave Fibonacci here. Uh, and let me, get, let me show you guys how to, how to get that. You go here. You go to trend-based Fib extension to get that, that one. It's not the traditional Fibonacci retracement tool. So what we see here is that the origin of the downtrend, which is about here, we get a move down to here, and then we get a move back down to here. I see two pretty important things here, not just the obvious, uh, you know, this to this equals this, as you can see, one to one ratio. What we see is you could call this a one, two, three, four, five Elliott wave pattern. It's not the prettiest Elliott wave pattern because most Elliott wave patterns have alternation where uh, this looks like it's about a 38.2 to 50% retracement of this move. And this is clearly about a 38.2 retracement as we had just seen. Typically one wave is going to be a 61.8% retracement, but I guess in a very strong downtrend where the buyers are unable to press the price much higher, the 38.2 is likely going to hold. And you see that here. And what you also kind of see is, is not, not, a, not a great Wyckoff pattern. This is, this is a really good Wyckoff pattern here. But this one we do see price goes up above resistance. Uh, retail traders buy in and price goes right back down. As you can see after they're trapped on very high bearish momentum. 
So the point that I, I'm bringing up here is this one, two, three, four, five Elliott wave pattern. How do you combine Elliott wave theory with Wyckoff? Well, you'd be using Elliott wave theory for the ratios and for the length of the trends. So for the lengths of, uh, of this trend, what I did was I measured the origin of wave one down to the end of wave three, and I plotted that onto the end of wave four. So just one to three onto five. That would be known as a fifth wave extension. And the reason that I, I thought that this would become a fifth wave extension was that wave, wave one was quite short, wave three was a little bit longer, uh, so, so it would it makes sense that, that wave five would be about um, probably the length of wave three or a, a bit longer, as you, as you can see here. And Wyckoff theory could actually allow you to trade into this here and to trade into this here, uh, whereas Elliott wave theory might be a little bit more limited in trading consolidation uh, patterns that, that we talked about before, these types of consolidation patterns. And then you would switch right over to Elliott wave theory when you get these kinds of um, price discoveries as, as price goes much lower. So this is just, you know, glimpsing the, the, the surface of all these different kinds of ways that you can add in other indicators and even other kinds of analyses to complement Wyckoff trading. And the limitations, the weaknesses of, of Wyckoff theory from, from what I've seen is predicting the effect. So we have the cause uh, known as the consolidation, the reaccumulation, redistribution, accumulation, distribution, but the effect itself uh, Wyckoff does talk about how trends operate, but he was more interested in what happens before the trend actually begins. And Elliott Wave Theory is actually more interested in plotting future trends based on the data from uh, previous trends. So these kinds of patterns actually merge together pretty well, where you get uh, trend-based Elliott Wave and consolidation cause-based, which is Wyckoff. And these kinds, of, these kinds of patterns can work quite well together, as you can see with Ethereum here with a, uh, a redistribution and a redistribution and a five wave sequence to, to top it off as well. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video and uh, have a great day.